So earlier we spoke about our Governor General's badge, which depicts a scene which we uh, pretty much saw recently play out with a gentleman by the name of George Floyd. And now in light of the Black Lives Matter movement, brands across the world are taking a look at their branding. Some of them are making adjustments. We've got digital marketer and development strategist Joel Numdarkum on the line. Uh, good morning to you, sir. How are you doing this morning, Joel? Good morning, good morning. Another week, another week in digital, another week to see which brands will come up with some foolishness again. <laughs> but um, but staying strong, you know, wow. and I'm looking forward to see the difference and the changes. Uh, busy time for you, right, Joel, with everything that's going on? Come again, Sim? Busy time for you with everything that's been happening around the world? Oh, my God. Absolutely. Um, you know, at work, I'm in digital, so right now, if, if you weren't really doing digital before as a company, uh, right now is an opportune time. We've seen where so many brands have come to the forefront. We've seen where so many brands have uh, faltered because of not having that as a part of their strategy. Uh, the world is really looking to digital, social, everything along that line right now to survive and push their business. And um, it's, it's been super busy trying to ensure that we change the ways in which we get business, generate leads, uh, communicate, and, you know, just to meet consumers where they are and what they're really looking forward to. So it's been a pretty busy time for me at work, honestly. Tell me a little bit about how our local brands are responding in the face of what's been going on internationally. I know some consumers have been putting pressure on corporate brands to take a position on what has been mm -hmm. happening. Uh, you see a lot of companies and their CEOs have been coming out personally to issue statements yes. about Black Lives Mattering and, um, you know, honoring equality and so on. What has our situation been locally? Locally, it's been very disappointing, to be honest, Simone. Uh, we, we, as Caribbean nationals and as Caribbean brands and businesses, we have had a tradition, a traditional approach to how we do corporate social responsibility. Um, majority of the times it's along the lines of supporting health and wellness, education, supporting schools, supporting sports. But when it comes down to injustice or, or crying out against that, it's a very, I can't even probably count on five fingers brands that usually are very vocal against these things because locally it's not on brand. You want to look good. You want to stay away from anything that's apolitical. You want to stay away from anything that will um, turn consumers against you. And it's unfortunate because that's not the case. What's happening right now is a lot of consumers are looking towards brands that have a purpose and are purposeful in their marketing efforts and strategies. There's a shift in how people are buying. And people are not just purchasing from people because, oh, you know, that brand looks good. I'm going to buy from them. They're looking deeper. So locally, it's been disappointing. I recall when there was the and and, and there's a, there's a there's a very um, foolish approach that Black Lives Matter doesn't impact the Caribbean and as such, we shouldn't really pay much attention to it. But my people, I'm here to tell you that the moment you board a flight and you reach the United States of America, you will be treated as a Black American. They don't care if you come from Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, Guyana, West Africa. That's the experience you'll be getting. So that's something that support should be lent towards. Well, but locally, honestly, disappointing. Yeah, there are folks who will tell you that we can get that right here at home, eh? Those lines of discrimination. Uh, You'd have to board yes. a plane um, you to see them. You don't have to board a plane. <laughs> but we were just yeah, showing some of the brands that have um, kind of stepped out to the fore to make major moves. Yes. So PepsiCo, um, um, scrapping the Aunt Jemima breakfast brand that's 130 years yes. old. Um, Uncle Ben's Rice. Um, Mrs. Butterworth's pancake syrup, cream of wheat cereal, mm -hmm. said they're revisiting their packaging. Um, dry yes, as ice cream, yeah, dry yes. as ice cream said it would change your name and some of these names Eskimo ice, Eskimo <sighs> pie brand. Um, yes. Nestle said it's going to stop selling under its Colombian Beso de Negra brand cookies. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's some, if you it's, really sit and you look at some of these brands, you wonder how, like, did you get away with this Simone, in the first place? Simone, I'm telling you, you know, just last night I was speaking to a colleague. Colleague, she's an actress, and she was talking about the fact that um, the, the the whole outrage around what George George Floyd's murder has set up has so many things across industries pulling up brands, businesses, fashion industries. You see where Harper's Bazaar appointed their first black editor-in-chief in a hundred and something years yep. and what's happening with these brands is that 
there's a question in terms of who are some of the people on these boards. Let's go there. You know, um, these are years of, 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 raci of racist, uh, you know, plots in their objectives. And now is where they're removing the cataracts from them eye, which they've never seen from before. And I mean, it's kind of twofold because for one, it's a good move. But for two, there are some people, for example, the family members of the Aunt Jemima brand are saying that they don't want it to, they don't want it to be removed because you can't be removing a, a part of history that's been, you know, ingrained in that. So there's also that argument from the family members who are saying, listen, you can't remove that because it's, a, it's, it's remembering what would have happened from years before. But at the end of the day, it's more than just removing or changing your logo. <coughs> It goes back to hiring. It goes back to initiating and putting things into your brand practice that's not a peripheral. Right now in the States, you have so many different roles coming up, Simone. The diversity and inclusion programs, yep. manager, chief, yep. diversity, officer, yep. and all of that. And really and truly, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it, it shouldn't be a stop gap kind of movement. It's something that should be a part of your objectives. Why is it that you have brands like Nike? As soon as something happens, Simone, I don't know if you've always been following up with Nike, but as soon as something happens, Nike is the first brand to vocal. actually come out and speak against. Yeah. Very vocal. Very vocal. That's so they were there for Colin Kaepernick. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it got uh, them more business Williams. because people were, people were impressed business. by the fact that they took they take a stand, is what it is. They take a stand, yeah. exactly. And people can, people can uh, you know, put that. People, it's, it's like an expectation. That anything that goes against injustice or the basic decency of humanity, Nike is the first brand. And as soon as Nike did that, you had so many other brands coming out with a typical brand response template, black and white. Oh, the brand apologizes for this and blah, 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 blah. And all of them got dragged. There was yeah. this brand called Anthropology, a clothing brand. And they released a statement saying that they're standing in black solidarity. And when you check out their Instagram page, half of majority of the page, white women, white men, and then as soon as the whole George Floyd outrage, three little posts and them start post black people. So these are things that were not a part of it yeah. from way before. So no for them get drugged. And I'm well, happy to see that. Yes, <laughs> you, you love to see it. I love that. Yeah, All right, Joel, we have to go. Um, your word yeah, to, to corporates who are watching would be? My word to corporate, get a hang of the game and try to put basic human decency as a part of your core brand mantra and you will be you will see someone that doesn't make a difference yeah we'll hashtag justice for susan bogle gotcha watch ya all right joel you get in there that's for the next interview but yes you are yes, correct man. thank you so much joel for your thoughts this morning no problem, really really Thanks appreciate having, me. having you digital marketer yeah, and development strategist strategist joel numdakam all right guys we're gonna take a break on smile we're coming back, Nefril should, I think Nefril went on some kind of vacation. I'm seeing it about 20, does he still work here? All right, we'll be right back. <laughs>